I met this man of God in one of our conference, one of our meetings in the Romanian church. As such a dynamic person. And I invited him to come to our church. Sister Mihele, thank you for coming. Hope I didn't pronounce your name. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. All right, good. And thank you, Mihele. Please receive it. Thank you. Thank you. Then you can go back. I just wanted to say a word or two about this man, Pastor Daniel. He is a missionary pastor. He's an evangelist at heart. And there are evangelists in this church also. And he's an evangelist. As you see, he's married and he has four children. That's small for a Romanian family. <laughs> the minimum for Romanian families is 12. But, um, and Pastor Daniel came to this country in 2010. Uh, for some health reason, he came, and he worked in different jobs from laboring, and he became the director of his own company. Isn't that good? That he's a smart young man. God has blessed him. Since January 2021, until now, he's working as a missionary for the London City Mission. How many heard about the London City Mission? Very few. Uh, Harish Patel is your friend, yeah? Harish, Harish Patel is your friend. Yeah, Harish all right. Patel, yeah. yeah, Harish Patel is his friend. And he has pioneered and pastored. He has started seven churches in Romania. And he has visited several places of India. Coimbatore, Pune, Bombay, which other place? Hyderabad. And there are quite a few places in India. Uh, huh? Uti, Uti, Coimbatore, and these places. And so he has a heart for Asian people. And so I thought he's the a person to speak God's word today. Without much to say, Pastor Daniel, we are glad that you are here with us. And bring to us what God has put in your heart. God bless you. Put our hands together for Pastor Daniel. I was going to say good evening. You know why? Last night I was in Ilford, Ilford Town Hall. We had a wonderful meeting over there, and uh, many people came to Lord Jesus Christ. I was the, the event host, and wow, <laughs> it was fantastic. More than 380 people came in the town hall, and we celebrate God in, in, a, wonderful, uh, in a wonderful way. Uh, I'm so, so honored to be here this morning, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come here to see all beautiful men and women uh, have a, a wonderful applause for yourself and for God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have so many things in my mind, in my heart. I don't think I will have enough time to finish the day. <laughs> Even though our dear reverend, uh, it is very generous and gave me uh, very much time. Uh, yes, I was in India, and I can tell you something specifically. Oh, I need to put my timer, sorry, because, you know, once I start to speak, it's, it's very hard to stop, you know, and uh, uh, my, one of my son, he, cannot, he couldn't come here. He used to show me time out, daddy when it was the time to finish. And that clock over there deceived me, you know. I used to say I have three enemies. I have only three enemies. I don't know anyone about, but just three of them I know. One, it is myself, Daniel Oltano. And I need to fight with me, as Paul said. I fight with me, and we fight with us. Many, many times we don't go. This is another preaching, another time, praise the Lord. But that's my first enemy. Second one, it is the devil because he wants to use me. And the third one, you know who it is? Time. <laughs> we run out of time many, many times. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> when I was 11 years and six months, I gave my life to Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I 
because it was communist time in Romania, we haven't had our Bibles. We had only our father's Bible, only one Bible to six people. And uh, yeah, we, we struggled that time. But uh, some books came in, in our hands and they were around the churches, you know, from village to village. Because I'm a countryside boy, I'm from the village. And I praise God, I lived in a village area. My wife made me a citizen. So <laughs> city boy, you know, I like to live in a, in a, in a village. And um, uh, yeah, one, one book came about a missionary who went in India. And it was so exciting reading that book. Wow. I was praying and kneeling every single evening. I said, God, send me in India. God, send me in India. The time passed. I got my uh, job. I forgot about this. I got married. I forgot about India. And in 2018, a brother from Basildon said, Brother Daniel, I'm, I'm going in India. And I was praying to God and I was wondering if you'd like to join me. Woo! After so many years. So just wait on God because He is faithful. It doesn't matter if it, if it is not happened today or tomorrow. The day after tomorrow, it might happen. In your lifetime, it will happen what He promised. Hallelujah. He is very faithful. I was there. Wow. When I was there. I was so enthusiastic about so many things over there. In Uti, that was fantastic. When we landed in, in uh, Mumbai, it was in the, during in the night. And very nice couple, uh, family, uh, they, they came and took us to their house. And uh, we spent very, very nice time over there. And as our dear Reverend told us, I was in, in five, I think there are five cities. Uti, Coimbatore, um, uh, uh, Pune, Mumbai, and Bangalore. Ban Bangalore? Bangalore, yes. I hope I said correctly. Wonderful, wonderful place. I, I can't forget. And I can tell you, please pray for me. You see, I didn't start to preach. <laughs> I pray for me because I have friends in north of India. And uh, pa Pastor Raj, he wants to call me next year over there. I might go next year. I would like to go to preach the gospel. Four people gave their life to Lord Jesus Christ when we were there. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Uh, our text today. So we have only four kids because my wife, she had three miscarriages. So we have seven. Because even though they, you know, they are unborn, they are children, they are with us, in, with God in heaven. So we are short here, but we are big in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for each and every one. Uh, my text today, it is from Acts chapter 17. I will read a few, a few verses. Verse 24. And uh, please bear with me. If you want to open the Bible, it is Acts chapter 17. You will see me sipping the, the water because my mouth get dried when I am behind the pulpit. I am very nervous. If you come with me on the, on the street, I will give you my water because there it is my realm. I am evangelist much more than a pastor. So um, Acts chapter 17 verse 24. It says, the, uh, the God who made the world and everything in it... It is Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temple built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he need, needed anything. Because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else from one man. He made every nation of man, of men. That uh, they should inhabit the whole earth, even in London. And he <clears throat> determined, this means he decided the time set for them and the exact place where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though... He is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Amen. Amen. Uh, you see, I think you heard many preaching from here. But this is a very heavy loaded scripture. 
very heavy loaded scripture and in my answer to some of your question today this morning you know uh, I was born in, in south of Romania just above the, the capital of Romania Ploiești that's in the, in the capital is Bucharest and I was born in Ploiești and then God allowed me to move much southwest to go with a mission and I've been working over there where I met my beautiful wonderful wife and we created a family over there but then after a while God put in my heart to go and find a good uh, medical treatment for one of our son and I looked around I went in in Spain I went in Germany I went in Switzerland I had friends in Italy no, I didn't know anyone in, 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 in England. And I said, I'm not going to, to be based on relation with the people that I know in all these places. And I'm going in London. And a pastor, a colleague my, of mine, he said, Pastor Daniel, do you know anyone in London? I said, no, I know only one. And he said, who is that one? He thought it is a big pastor or something like that. I said, it is Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, everyone knows Lord Jesus Christ. I said, yes, and he's the only one that I know in London. And are you going like that? Aren't you afraid? Well, I was a bit action, you know, because you, you are a little bit afraid. But I said, you see, he died for people, not for the birds. And uh, in the Bible, Lord Jesus Christ said, oh, you little faith. Look at the birds. Look at the lily of the valley. How God cared for them. And I said, did God die for that? No. He died for me and for you. So God, it is Jehovah Jireh, one of his name. God will provide and everything that it is for you. Don't be afraid of the day of tomorrow. Because he is in control with everything. I don't know if you struggle with anything. But if you struggle... Let him to take control of your life. Let him to take control of your life. Just go. I, I'll tell you just one example, a brief example. Uh, uh, we, we lived in Leighton for a while because we moved from place to place. I tell you, I, I was going to tell you, we, we moved from, uh, from Romania to London. And uh, yeah, in London, we moved in, in five places <laughs> many times. And then we moved in Basildon. And from Basildon, we moved here. And from here, we are not forever here. We are going to move because we need to be relocated. But I tell you, we were in Leighton in 2011. <clears throat> and we, 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 we had a, a letter from council that we need to give a big sum of money back to them because they said many, many things. I, my wife gave me the, the letter when I came back from my job. And uh, she was a little bit scared. And uh, when I saw the, the, what he's written in the letter, too much money for me. For a labor like me, whoo, I couldn't afford that money. And I said, come on, we'll do something. And we took the letter, we put it down, and we nail above the letter like this. We put our knees above the letter because in the Bible it says you are above of all things. And the way I said we are above the problem in this letter. Lord Jesus Christ, you are almighty. You are in control of this. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are weak. We are human beings. A little, you know, a, a, a little panic it can come in our life. But... Don't fail. Don't slide back. Just go forth and put your knees on the problem. And stay behind. And just stay above the problem. Because God it is going to take you as the, uh, uh, you know, uh, as the vulture, uh, as the, the, the eagle on his wings. Hallelujah. Oh, I didn't start to preach. Ooh. We went against the council. And then we won after nine months. Praise the Lord. And they gave us much more than we thought we need to give them. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Just one experience. I know you have many like that. But God is in control. He says here, look what he says here. The God who made. There are many gods in, in the world, isn't it? There are many gods in the world. We know that. 
But here he says something specific. The God who made the world. What God made the world? It is only one God. Praise be his name forever. And that God who made the world, that God who made the world, and everything in it, everything in it. What does he make a God who made the world? What does he make a God who made, who made the world and everything in it? It makes a creator, isn't it? He is the creator of all. I was thinking, look at that clock over there. Who made that clock? Who made the watch? You know, it must be somebody who made, who thought, who invented. You know, when you open a, a watch, well, now it, they are much more electronic, but the old one, which are, you know, tick, 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 tick. I used to have that. And I used to open. Sometimes you, you put to go speed, sometimes you put to go slower because it was too much in the front. <laughs> you remember? Who created that watch? Someone who created it. It is a creator. Who created all this world? It is a creator. So God who made the world is the creator. This means he is not from this world because he created the watch, the watchman, who, the, the one who, who made, the, you know, the maker of the watch. He is not in the watch, isn't it? He is outside of the watch. He is outside of the clock. He is not in that clock, isn't it? God is not from this world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Many people confuse God with a man. Even many times he identifies as a father. And he is a good, good father. And as a husband, many times in the Old Testament, we don't have enough time to go there. God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord. Wow. Here in England, we understand much better what Lord means. <laughs> and he is Lord Jesus Christ in Revelation. You know how he is called, yes? He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Praise be Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He is the Lord of lords. So we don't go too much in it. It is the Lord of heaven and earth. When we read in Revelation chapter 5 and 4 and 5. When we see that the angels bow down before God and Father and Lord Jesus Christ. And they are shouting, holy, holy, holy. It is our God. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, I have goosebumps on it. What does it mean to be holy? To be apart, to be away from what is not holy. We don't go too much. You see, it is very, very much... What means to be a Lord? What means to be a Lord of, of London? Of, I don't know. Maybe we, we say lawn, uh, landlord, isn't it? And he's doing whatever. If, if that landlord wants to come to put you away, if you don't, uh, if you don't want the house, I'm, I don't want a house here. I, mean, I, I live in a, in a landlord house. And if the landlord says, Daniel, I give you one, one month and you need to leave. I have to leave because it is house. He is doing everything what he wants. He wants to change something, he is changing something. He wants to keep you, he will keep you. He wants to uh, uh, put you away, he will put you away. He is the Lord. He has the power, he is the right, and many, many other things. Just think that he is the Lord of heaven. He is doing everything what he wants in heaven and on this earth. Oh, we go further on. And does not live in temple built by hands. We can speak a little bit more about here because um, um, Solomon, he built a temple. And when he, he prayed that prayer, he said, you who, which the heaven of heavens cannot uh, uh, comprehend you, cannot take you. How can I build a house for you? You see? But now imagine... Ooh, it just came in my mind, in my heart. Imagine that Lord of heaven and earth wants to come in your heart. Hallelujah. He humbled himself so much that he wants to come in your little heart. 
Hallelujah. To, his, to him be the glory. And it is not served by human hands. We can speak very much about this, but we don't, we go farther one. Because many times, many services that we do, we think that we do for God. Yes, we do in his name, but we don't serve him. Lord Jesus Christ, just one, I want to touch this. Lord Jesus Christ said, if you don't speak, uh, these, these stones will speak. And many times, you know, the archaeology uh, spoke much more than, than, than human being. Because prove what the Bible says. And he's not served by hand. And if he needs anything, uh, as, oh, sorry, as he, if he needs anything. Because he, and now listen, he himself gives all men life and breath. And everything else. If we stop a little bit here, he gives lives. I told you my wife... She had three miscarriages, and uh, we understood that it is not a time, it is not uh, of God, because God didn't want that children to be with us here. Maybe I, I thought uh, we, we are not worthy. We pray and fast and pray and fast, and finally, when the time came, God gave us a wonderful girl. Who gave us? God. When you receive a child, a little, we just sang and I took a picture whoa, every single time when I hear that, that song, that hymn, uh, bring me in tears. God gave a son. They call him Jesus. Hallelujah. How wonderful it is to have a little baby in your hands, isn't it? The new Couple married, they are waiting and looking forward so much for that little baby. And when the baby comes, there is a big, big celebration, isn't it? And, and that child becomes kind of the boss of the house. <laughs> but when we see, when we saw Naomi in our hands, we said, God gave a wonderful daughter. So... From where comes the children? From God. You are coming from God. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 verse 13 he says that uh, Paul says I bow my knees before the father of our Lord Jesus Christ from where all family are coming from. We are coming from God. And many people when in London here in London when they call me where are you from? You know what I'm telling them? I'm from heaven. And they say what? Are you mocking me? No. Are you joking? No, I'm not joking, man. You are from heaven too. Explain me more. Yes, we are from heaven and we are just, you know, just going through this world, passing by. The house that you live now in, there were many other people who lived in. Unless it is the very, very new house, which is built, new build now. But we live in a house that it is since uh, 1980s or something like that. And uh, when I asked the landlord and even the, the neighbors over there, they said, wow, praise the Lord because uh, you, you came here because they had a chaos over there. The, it, it was a, uh, a sharing house and they had so much noise over there, they had to call the police. And when they heard that I'm a pastor missionary, they said, oh, praise the Lord, the man of God came here. It will be silent for a while. Hallelujah. And how many before that man... We inhabit that house. We're in that house. And how many before the others? Just think about it. We are not here forever. We are just going through. You are not forever here. Hallelujah. Just to remind you. From one man. Oh, he gave breath. And I have here a nice scripture. Let me put a sign here to find, quickly find. Do you know that every breath... Is even a song there. Every breath that you take, it is controlled by God. When you make, <sighs> He count that breath. In Psalm 139, He says that all our days before we were born, they were written in His book. 
your days were written in, in, in his book. You can eat as healthy as you want. It is good to eat healthy. Don't get me wrong. You can, you can live as healthy, as wonderful as you want. When the time is coming, when he's looking in that book and said, Daniel, now is the time. Come on. Your breath, it is taking away. And behind me, many will cry, but I will rejoice in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says in, in, in Psalm 104, 104, verse 27, he says, These all look to you uh, to give them their food at the proper time. He's in control even with animals. When you give, when you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send, you, send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. He is in control of everything. There are many people who died. Lazarus! Come out, Lord Jesus Christ. He's dead for his four days. You don't know that I am alive. I'm the life, the truth, and the way. He is the one who gives you lives. He is the one who gives you breath. He is the one who controls everything in your life. Oh, la la. I, I, I want to go quickly. You, you see, he's, he gives life and breath and everything wow i work hard i achieve so much i was able today to buy this coat no 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 think about if you wouldn't have health that god it is looking after you. how many times we pray for sick people and god give god heal people how many times you had back pain or i don't know what kind of shoulder pain and you you took you took paracetamol and the pain didn't still uh, went away and you had to call your boss so sorry i can't make it today because i have pain i have struggle i have this i need to go to gp and the gp said oh come on after one month <laughs> or something like that and in that month he was praying 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 and the pain went away it has happened with me many times I tell you from my experience, when they called me back, I said, I don't need any assistance because the pain went away. Praise the Lord. God is the good healer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So he gives man life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made every nation of men. We are coming from Adam and Eve. Praise the Lord. We are not Romanian, we are not Indian, we are not Pakistan, we are not... Uh, no, we are human beings. We are from the same seed, from Adam and Eve. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what, what kind of, how people will call you. You are the one that God created you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, that they should inhabit the whole earth. Wow, I like to go in many places. He made to inhabit many places. He made to inhabit the, the earth. And, let's go quickly. He decided the time set for them. Here it is very, very important. You might wonder or ask yourself, why am I in London? How long I will be in London? Why I'm not in another part of the world? I met people who came from United States. Maybe you, you came from another country. France, Italy. Or I, I, I met many Romanians who uh, they were born in, in Italy. And they moved here. And uh, I was wondering why are we moving around? And we think, oh, I was thinking to get a better job. I was thinking to live in a better country. I was thinking so and so and many, many thoughts we think. But you don't know that in your little brain, God put a desire. He is giving you the desire and he is giving you the pleasure to go to move in a certain place. And you are here because God decide you to be here it is not because you decide. You just follow God's instruction. Either you knew or didn't know. 
you just follow God's instruction because he determined he decide the time and it was a time when you live somewhere else and then he decide to as I told you I, I moved in five places in London and now I'm going to move again and I was thinking I like to move in such of area but when God uh, sent some brother and said no 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 come here even Paul wanted to go somewhere else and angel said no come here come over here you are going to move where, the, where God it is going. You just need to listen to God. You just need to be obeyed. Amen? Amen. Because it is a time. It is a time, even for me. People ask me, Daniel, are you going back to Romania? I don't know. I would like to go, but I would like to go to travel everywhere to preach the gospel. I don't know where God is going to send me. And look what he says here. Uh, he he decide the time set for them and the oh la la it's written in your Bible the same like in mine it's the Bible over there yeah it says here in my Bible exact place number six Balfour Grove exact place God why you want me to be on six Balfour Grove well, whatever number you have and whatever name of the street you have or flat or whatever house you have, God decide you to find that available. God decide to find that available. And when you sow, he gave pleasure to your eyes to say, wow, this is the place I would like to live. You know, we, we moved from Basildon in 2021 in 27 of August. But before 27 of August, we, we looked around in London because London City Mission told me to find a house. And we look around and I think about six, seven houses. Six, seven houses. We, we, we've been, either we didn't like them or it was a house my wife, she liked the most. She said, wow, if we move here, Daniel, that would be fantastic. Nice refurbished one. And we spoke with the agent and the agent said, yes, it's okay, everything, even the landlord. Next day, the, the agent called me, sorry, Daniel, the, the, the landlord decided to give to someone because he increased the price. And I was thinking, why is not that house for us? My wife was a little bit sad and I said, why, why don't you look on, online and find the house and I will call them. And she find the house and I called the, the, the um, uh, agency and now we, we came here. And we didn't know, little we knew, that just across the street, it was a family, Christian family, who was struggling with an ill husband. And in the, <clears throat> I think 2022, yes, in 2022, in the springtime, we had to bury that husband. But that husband wasn't Christian, it was only the wife. And they welcomed us. When we went there, the lady, the sister, she came with a big bunch of flowers and said, welcome here. <laughs> Wonderful neighbor. Sometimes you might not have a, such of nice neighbors. Sometimes you don't like your neighbors. Sometimes their neighbors don't like you. You know how it is in London. You don't choose your neighbors. You choose just your friends. But God, listen, decide the exact place. And he decide with a specific reason. We'll go there in the minute. We spoke with David, we preached to David, he had to go in hospital for three months and on, on his uh, deathbed, I was called, Daniel come quickly because he is going to die. I went to hospital and I said, David, you know, everyone passed away one day or another. In one day you will leave this earth. I know Daniel, I know. I preached the gospel to him many times since I was there. And I said, are you sure you are going in heaven if you are going to die today? The doctors were taking all the, you know, uh, pulse and everything because they thought he is going to pass. And he said, Daniel, he, I, 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 I can see even now he was laying in bed, moving his legs. And he said, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. He was very sincere because he loved us. And I said, David, you have a wonderful name like in the Bible, like King David. Would you like to be a king? Oh, how can I be a king here in this bed? I said, you can be a king because 
the king of kings cannot be the king of kings if there are no kings. You know what I mean? He, we need to be kings that he will be the king of kings. So you are a queen and a king in the, in the, in the kingdom of God. We'll, we'll speak about that another time, maybe. Another preaching. I spoke with him. Long story short. And I said, would you like to pray? He said, I don't know to pray, man. I don't know to pray. I said, look, I'm going to pray. And you are going to repeat after me, if you like. Yes, yes, man. And I said, you don't need to say everything what I'm saying. If you feel that doesn't fit your mind, your desire, what you feel in your heart, don't say after me. Just skip that word or sentence or whatever. Okay, okay. And I start to say the sinner prayer. I don't have a specific sinner prayer. I pray as the Holy Spirit guide me. I can tell you that legs, he, he moved before I, I told him, are you ready to go in heaven? Now was moving of joy. He said, praise the Lord, Daniel. I can die now. Praise the Lord, I can die. Hallelujah. We didn't know that God put us with a specific purpose just for one soul. Because he says here, he says, God did this so that man would seek him. And not every single time it happened. So don't be disappointed if you will preach to someone and someone will reject you. Don't be disappointed if people will, will tell you off. Because he says, he says, perhaps, maybe, reach out for him and find him. God put you on 6th Balfour Grove with a specific task over there. To be a testimony for a specific time. You are not very long here. You might believe me, you might not believe me. Maybe you are thinking, why am I here? Because God brought you with a specific task in that place to evangelize, to be a testimony, to be a light for people around you. Be a light in that little corner of the world. Hallelujah. After David died, it was the first sermon uh, when I preached to a funeral, funeral sermon. I was so nervous because... I never preached in a, a funeral ceremony in, in, in London, in UK. Back in the country, we had quite a few. But, uh, you know, people who came to that ceremony, to that funeral, they said, we like to hear more about Lord Jesus Christ. And we start a Bible study over there every Wednesday. And from three of us, Angie, Michaela, my wife, and I, we are now 14 people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 14 people, they want to follow Lord Jesus Christ. And my wife was with them last uh, evening because I couldn't be. I was in, in, in Ilford. They, and, and, other, and others, they came and they said, we like to come to the Bible study. We like to hear God's word. You are with a specific purpose here in London for a specific time. Don't waste your time and don't hesitate to preach and, and teach and show the gospel to those who need the gospel. Just a smile. You don't know how to introduce yourself. Don't say anything. Just a smile. Hi, hello, how are you? Maybe some people, they will be grumpy. I can tell you stories after stories. I, I have another five minutes, yes? Thank you very much. I was, I was working as, as a labor. I was working as a labor, <clears throat> 2011. And um, somebody told me of every single time. Because I was a labor, they gave me the key from the site. And I was the first who uh, opened the site. And I was the, the last who locked the site. Uh, locked the site. So I was going there, I knew everyone, how they drink the coffee, how they drink the tea. And I said, uh, do you want to drink tea? Do you want to drink coffee? Yes, man, make a tea, make a... And I made tea and coffee for everyone. One person in specific, he didn't want, no, you are a Romanian. I don't want to drink tea from you. And he made himself for 32 days. 
I didn't stop asking him. I make him crazy asking him. I said, Tom, do you want to drink tea? He said, no, man, you are Romanian. I don't want to drink tea from your hand. No problem. Next day I said, Tom, do you want to drink tea? No, man, you're Romanian. I don't want to drink tea from your hand. After 32 days, something was happening on site. Somebody blamed me that I destroyed the tool, you know, a cheaper carpenter, and I didn't. <laughs> and guess who took my part? That man who didn't want to drink tea from a Romanian guy. He said, no, man. You are, you are wrong. From this guy, he will never ever do something such of wrong things. And I, I, oh, when he took my side, when he was on my side, I said, praise the Lord, he changed his life. Next day, the, third, the, the 33rd, 33rd day, when I say, Tom, do you want to drink tea? Yes, man. You know how I'm drinking my, my tea. I said, yes, I know. You put the, the tea bag and leave it there. Yes, man, give me the tea. Hallelujah. Don't hesitate. Show them love. Show, show them compassion. Help them when they need. Even though they will walk on your shoulder. Show God's love. And one day, when they will be in the hospital, when they will be in problem, when they will be in a situation of struggling, they will call you. Man, I know you are a Christian. Would you like to pray for me? God put you with a specific purpose here. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. He is the one that put you here. Even though you think you, you decide. I'm going to close. I hope this will help you to understand why you are here. How long, we don't know. God will help us to understand. And look, it says here, it's much more, but we, we, I don't want to take to the... They are already 36, 38 minutes. It says here, God did this so that man would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from each of us, each, each one of us. And now he says, for in him we live and move and have our being. From here we can preach another 30 minutes or maybe one day. But I would like to leave you with these thoughts. Think now more positive, more constructive. Not as the world said positive. But when you think, why am I here? Oh, maybe my neighbor needs me. Maybe I need to have a truck, a, a leaflet, and give to someone else. And when it, you know, when it is Christmas time, I used to take to order. Uh, I, I need to close the Bible, otherwise I'm not finishing my preaching. This is the way I finish my preaching. Uh, I, I, I used to order uh, uh, Christian calendars. And I gave to every neighbor to show them that I am a Christian. When I came here, even in Basildon, when I went in Basildon, no one sent me a, a Christmas card. But after I gave them a Christmas card, we, we, had, we had a pile of Christmas cards. And when we look, number four, number six, number eight, wow, fantastic. Be the one, be the first that you broke the ice between you and your neighbors. Tell them about goodness of God. Tell them about how God uh, was working in your life. Give them a, a, a card. Ask them of, about their birthday. I like when the Reverend he, he is celebrating the birthday. It is a very important day for many people. Oh, by the way, if you don't mind, can you tell me when is your birthday? Oh, such of such. Some, some people they will tell you, some people they don't. But they will tell you. They, they will be very open, very close to God. May God help us to be the one that we are going to spread the gospel in such a way that he will be glorified in your neighborhood, in our neighborhood, in our life, forever and ever. Amen. Can we give another hand to Pastor Daniel? Thank you for coming and sharing the word and your life experiences as well. You know, sometimes we pray, Lord, change my neighbor. Have you prayed like that one? I don't like my neighbor. I don't like their habits. I don't like the way they put the rubbish out and whatever, you know. But instead, couldn't you, couldn't I pray, Lord, change me. 
That's what sometimes we have to pray. God can change the neighbors. God can change others. But hardly ever we pray, Lord, change me. And God has put us in wherever we are. As Pastor Daniel said, God determines where you're going to live, the boundaries and everything he knows. So where you are living now, God has a purpose. Be fruitful and be multiplied where God has planted you. Let me just end our meeting today with a testimony I received the other day. Talking about living by faith. I sent that testimony in the WhatsApp group. It's in Hindi, so some of you can understand, some of you cannot understand. There's a man by the name of Pastor Samuel. It's a real life story. I knew this Pastor Samuel. He passed away. He lived, he went from south to the northern part of India in MP. Madhya Pradesh in those days. By faith he went. They didn't have any penny in his hand. Any rupees in his hand. He went there to start a mission. To pioneer a church. People who speak Hindi in that area. Pastor Samuel had a friend. And I forgot his name. It's also in the, in the testimony. They both had to go to this place in Mumbai. Bombay. Mukti Mission. Pandita Rama Bai. That's a place they had to go for some reason. They went there, they attended the service, they asked him to preach, and he preached as well. Remember, Pastor Samuel lived by faith. Doesn't borrow money from anybody, doesn't ask anybody. After the end at the end of the service in Mukti Mission, they had to return to this place called Raipur in Rajatalab. That's a place. Hopefully we will get this man of God who sent me the testimony in the next month's time, a few months' time. He wants to come and preach the word. He grew up in that pastor's discipleship. When they came back to the railway station, they had no money to buy the ticket. Can you imagine in those days it was so difficult? It's going back to 19, early 1950s or late 1940s. And they were sitting there. So his friend asked Pastor Samuel, Pastor Samuel, we have no money to go back to our place, so what do we do? He said, don't worry. God will provide. He knows there is no money in his hands, but he's saying to his friend, God will provide. Yes, so they waited. Waited and waited. Train is about to come. And the train nearly was about to come now. Still no ticket. They cannot travel back to Raipur. But Pastor Samuel believes, yes, God will provide the ticket for us. All of a sudden, somebody rushing in the crowd. Pastor Samuel, Pastor Samuel, here is the gift. God asked me to give this gift. Pastor Samuel is wondering, who is this man? The train is approaching by this time. Can you imagine? The train comes to the station a few minutes early, then he had to get the ticket and he had to go. And this man had received some blessing, some ministry through Pastor Samuel or heard about him somewhere because of his life in Jesus. And he gave him that envelope and he disappeared. It could be a man, it could be a friend, it could be even an angel. That's what somebody says. He opened the envelope. And that was enough for him and for his friend to get the ticket, get on, the, on board on the train, and get back to Raipur. And you might say, hey, Pastor Joe, that happens in the old time. But I tell you, it still does happen. Because God is the same, brothers and sisters. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who provided for Abraham, on the mountain, he's still able to provide for you. How many experience, as we come to a close of prayer, how many experience any miracles in your life all this time? Anybody received miracle? Whoa! Cloud of witnesses. God has done miracles. He always does miracles. In closing, if you are thinking about, feeling about, 
worried about concerned about what do i do with this situation all doors are closed i don't seem to have any hope at all now this is the end of it about my job about my family about my visa status about the, this problem of my sickness about the relationship problem between children and parents between husband and wife there are all kinds of situations are the unemployment the accommodation situation but god has determined something for you and for me and it will come to pass in his time but what you and i have to do is trust him hold on to the word of god and the promises of god's word as you hold on god says here is a time the train is coming get the money open the envelope get the money and get the ticket and go don't trust in men trust in god as bow heads in prayer thank you jesus he is god of all He has given us breath, life, and He is our King, and He is the King of Kings. He determines where we have to live and what we have to do, but we need to submit ourselves daily saying, Lord, help me to be in your will all the time. The jobs I'm taking, let it be in your will. the places i am going let it be as you determine lord lord whatever i am about to engage in let it be in your will even the toughest times i am going through lord we know that god is about to make a way romans 8:28 tells us we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the lord as many as are called by the lord now father we thank you for this day thank you for your people who have come thank you for our guest speaker and his dear wife thank you for our children grandchildren thank you lord for the guests thank you for the word we received today reminding us that we belong to god we come from god he is the creator of everything he is the provider of everything sometimes lord you restrain few things from us for your own purpose for your own glory and help us to fit in your will all the time lord as we receive your word today give us your strength your wisdom to live the next week should the lord tarry knowing that jesus christ is our king and he's still on the throne and he is our lord we give you praise we give you thanks in jesus name we pray amen and now the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god our father the fellowship and the communion of the holy spirit of god be with each one of us now and always amen amen well thank you everyone for coming today and continue to pray as we continue to live for god as soon as we finish now here of course tea and biscuits